Hey, what's up friends? This is James Hardy. Welcome to Power Flow Yoga. So we're going to start class out today at standing. You can have your feet at hip bone distance on parallel with one another, or you can bring your, your big toes together and drop a little bit of space back between your heels. Once you've got your feet set up, we'll do a few rounds of shoulder rolls. So these are, just, these are inhales where you just bring your shoulder heads high up towards your ears and exhales where you sigh out the mouth and just roll the shoulders down away from the ears and the back. Take that a couple of times. As you can see with me, I'm kind of bending deep into a squat and then lifting up so I'm getting some nice movement for my back as I go through this. So you can customize it as you'd like. And then eventually, you'll just allow the shoulder heads to release down away from the ears and the back. Release the weight of your arms, close your eyes, and then Dirga Swasam Pranayama, a three-part breath exercise. So join me just by releasing the air all the way down to empty. Breathe into your low belly for one, two, three, and hold. Breathe into your mid-abdomen for one, two, three, and hold. And then bring the air all the way to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Relax and hold on to your full breath. And then on your exhale, make this sound. Let's do that again. Breathe in low belly, low back. And hold. Breathe into your mid abdomen and your mid back. Hold there, feel your breath all the way up to the chest, all the way to the shoulders. Again, when you have your full breath, relax. And then on your exhale, like you were quieting a child. Begin Ujjayi breathing. So sipping the air in through the nose, filling from the bottom, climbing smoothly all the way up to the top. And then exhaling out the nose as if you're fogging up a mirror, slowly down to empty. And as you're sipping the air in through the nose and fogging up a mirror out through the nose, you're engaging the muscles in the back of the throat that narrowly pull air in and narrowly release air out. And you'll hear, start to hear the sound of ocean waves or of hollow winds. Controlling our breath is our link into a mindful practice. So just by controlling the inhales and controlling the exhales, you are bringing your mind into the present moment, into the present experience, into what is happening right here and now with your body. And a huge benefit we get when we practice mindfulness is we get that sense of grounding, we get that sense of rooting. So allow your breath to be your guide for your practice and just take what works for me and leave the rest behind. Bring the eyes open to a soft gaze up front. We inhale to lengthen and lift up tall into mountain Tadasana. And then on the exhale, hinge out from your hips and control a swan dive down to forward fold. Add some bend into the knees as you fold forward. Inhale halfway up, lengthen your spine, press to your shins, keep a little bit of a bend into your knees, tone your shoulder blades in, gaze is down. And on that exhale, refold. Bend your knees until your fingertips can touch to the ground. And then start to slowly walk your hands around like there's a semicircle from one side of your foot coming out in front of your feet and then to the other side of your other foot. And you can just walk the hands around this semicircle. You could give your head any nod yes or nod no that feels good just to remind the weight of your head to completely release and hang heavy from the spine here. And of course, stay with that breathing. Let's start to meet, meet back at center, and then just let the weight of your head and arms hang totally heavy. Vertebrae by vertebrae, roll up to standing. Make sure you don't lock the knees, keep a micro bend in. When your head and shoulders stack up, inhale the arms tall in space, and on the exhale, just draw your hands down into your heart center at standing. On your inhale, lift back up into mountain, breathe in. 
And as you exhale, hinge out from your hips and control your swan dive. Take that forward fold, hinging out. Inhale, halfway up, lengthen your spine, strengthen around it. And then plant the hands and we'll move back to the top of the plank position. Before we do much with our plank, I want to lower us down into tabletop and then warm the wrists up. So from your tabletop, just point the, the insides of your wrists forward with your palms down. Your fingers point back and your thumbs point to the side. And then as you massage here, you could circle, you could go backwards and forwards or sideways. You could also lean your sit bones, your body back, you know, back in space, your sit bones closer to your heels and peel your hands off the mat to your fingertips and just gently roll back forward into the mat until the heel of the palm lands. Take that a couple times, stay with your breathing. Nice, and then take the back of the hands down into the ground, and your fingers can face backwards or they can face towards one another. Again, circles, side to side, back and forth, or leaning back, peeling the hands back to your fingernails and gently rocking back forward until the back of your hands all the way to the ground. And then take it back to hero's pose, sit bones to your heels, tops of the feet to the ground, knees together, and just give a little roll out through your wrists. Awesome, friends. Okay, let's meet back up in that plank position. Stay on your toes or bringing your knees down to the mat and crossing your ankles. Take a breath in at the top of your plank. And on your exhale, we'll lower halfway to Chaturanga Dandasana, leaning forward with your sternum, elbows tight in towards your rib cage. Inhale, lifts back up to the top of your plank, breathe in. And on that exhale, again, come halfway down, leaning forward, elbows tight in. Again, if you're doing this on your knees, we're going to do it a couple more times. As you come back up, you want to avoid bending your hips. So keep a plank from your knees all the way through the back of the neck. Nice, friends. Okay, last yoga push-up. Exhale, come halfway down. Inhale, lift back up. Just shift your hips from here back into downward facing dog, lifting back up tall, lengthening through your body. Give a slow walk out to your down dog, dropping the weight into one heel at a time, bending through opposite knee. Press into the circle of your palms, spread out into your fingers. Let your elbows hug in towards center line, your biceps really hug into center line like you're holding tennis balls between your ears and your biceps. Weight of the head released forward, and as hips lift up, we're pulling those heels back down towards the ground. Awesome. On an inhale, reach your right leg back up in space, find a three-legged downward facing dog. And think about like you're pressing your heel back and up behind you. And in order to really get a strong press of it, you have to press down into that left foot and not collapse into your left hip. You have to be nice and strong in that left hip to press back through your right heel and of course through your arms and through your core. And then on an exhale, we'll bring the right foot up in between our hands to a low lunge position. Take warrior two from here. So knife edge of your left foot to the ground, left arm back, right arm forward. Might feel nice to bring your hands to low back or hips for a moment and kind of feel into the shape of this. So a really long stance from the front of the mat to the back. Heels are on a balance beam in one line. Your front knee is right over your heel, toes are pointing forward. You're pressing down into the lunge, but then you're also pulling back, your glute is pulling back up away from your knee. Thighs are toned in at center and then press down into the knife edge of that back foot. Open the arms if they're not open yet, shoot your gaze out of, of, over your front fingertips and stay with your breath. Just relax your shoulder heads away from the ears on the back. On an exhale, find extended side angle pose, so hinge forward. You can take your right forearm to your right thigh, or you can do the length of your right arm down the inside of the right leg. Today, if you'd like to bind, drop the left hand behind you so the hands to the outside of your right hip, right thigh. And then dive that right elbow down below the thigh in front of it and reach your right hand back and up, looking for the left hand. 
you might just pull against your, uh, your, your pants or against your shirt in opposite directions if your hands aren't bound. And then you're still stacking your shoulders, left shoulder over your right in the bind. And your gaze could be to the side, your gaze could be twisting up in space. Stay with that breath, stay strong in the legs. Inhale opens us to a star. So you're going to face the left side of your mat, all 10 toes face to the left, arms are out wide. And then on an exhale from your star, wide-legged squat. So the heels come in underneath your knees. Your feet point out at 45. Watch that your knees aren't collapsing inwards. We want the thighs rotating up and back so we're nice and stacked. And then bring your hands onto your thighs. Inhale, lift your spine up tall. And on your exhale, just twist to the back of the mat. So pressing your right hand into your right thigh, twisting through the spine. On an inhale, lift the spine back up tall. And as you exhale, let's take that twist this time over towards the front. So pressing off that back left thigh. Inhale brings us out of, our, or out of the squat into our star. And then on your exhale, come into your warrior two towards the front of the room. Find that warrior two shape, and we'll use it to get into trikonasana triangle. So begin by lengthening out your front right leg. And then extend your right arm as far forward as it goes. Finally, tilt down. Your right hand could go to your shin, or if you have a block, it could be on the outside of your ankle. You could press your right hand into it. Or if your fingertips connect to the ground, awesome, you can press those fingertips down. Left arm is straight up, and your gaze is to the left or twisting up in space where your hand is reaching. You are lengthening out the right leg, pressing into your right foot, drawing the hips back, but rather than completely locking out the right knee, ha have a micro bend in it, so we're engaging the muscles around the joints. And then the crown of your head is reaching forward, so the spine is a crossbar in this pose. And lastly, if your head and shoulders are dipping forward, press your head and shoulders back like there's a wall directly behind you you can press into. Find that breath, friends. Awesome, come back up to your warrior two on your inhale, and then we'll reverse the warrior on the exhale. So left hand to your hip thigh or wrapping behind your waist. Right arm pulls up in space. You can bend through the elbow if you like. Gaze comes up a little bit or to the side of the room or back down to your left foot. Press down into your lunge if you came up out of it. Find that lift up to your right arm. Stay with your breathing. And then on an exhale, just cartwheel your hands down to frame your right foot. Turn onto the ball of the left foot. We'll step back into a plank. And as we take a flow here, you could go directly to down dog if you want to skip this. Otherwise, you can exhale halfway down to Chaturanga Dandasana. You could take low cobra. I'm going to do upward facing dog. So pressing to the tops of the feet, lifting up through the chest. Shoulder, heads down away from the ears and the back. Nice strong behind us with the shoulder blades, biceps toned in. And just note in up dog, you are suspending the weight of your body on the tops of your feet and your hands, nice and strong through the core. Tuck your toes, lift your hips back up, downward facing dog. Take a couple rounds of breath in down dog, and then we're gonna find this on the other side. Right on, so as you're ready, let's take the left leg back up tall in space. And then same cue, where as you lift your left leg back up, I want you to pretend you can press your heel back to the wall behind you. And as you actively press up and back, you can't do that when you're sinking down into your right hip. You have to be strong in your right hip. You have to be nice and oriented to push back through that heel. And of course, it's more than that. It's also through our arms and our core in creating that strength through the trunk of the body. On an exhale, left foot up between your hands, low lunge position. Knife edge of the right foot to the ground and we rise up into our warrior two. Again, long stance. 
This drops your front thigh into that deep lunge. Your knee does not need to shoot forward beyond your heel. It stops right at your heel. You can do your hands low back or hips and just kind of line this up. Left sit bones tucked underneath your body. Feel that press down into your left leg. Feel the hug of your glute back in towards you. Thighs toning in, strong down through that back right leg. And if your arms are not open yet, let's open the arms up into our warrior two. Just relax your shoulder heads, find that breathing, and gaze out over your fingertips. One more inhale to our warrior two. And on the exhale, just hinge forward, extended side angle pose, left forearm, left thigh, right arm pulls up in space, or whatever variation you took last time. If we're doing a bind on this side, drop the right hand behind you to the outside of your left hip and thigh, drop that left elbow below the left thigh on the front, and then hook the hand up and back, reaching for your right hand or for your, your sweats or for your shirt. And then you're, again, rather than dipping your right shoulder down, you're stacking your right shoulder over the left, staying strong in that position with your legs and finding your breathing. Awesome. Inhale opens us to our star. This time you're facing to the right side of your mats. All ten toes face the right on your exhale. Find your wide-legged squat position. So knees in underneath your heels, feet out at 45, thighs rotating up and back, dropping the sit bones low. You can have your hands on top of your thighs. Hands could go to your heart center. You could also open the arms up wide and then just slightly tone your shoulder blades back and in. As a layer up, Feet might come in a little bit closer as you draw the heels off the ground, just pressing to the balls of the feet here. Relax through your face and find your breathing. If you're doing that lift onto the balls of your feet, any time that we start to balance on the balls of the feet, you can feel all those little balance muscles kicking in your body, holding you up in space. there. Inhale, reach back up into your star and on your exhale turn into warrior two to the front of your mat. Okay, so for a triangle we can start to lengthen out the left leg and then reach as far forward as you can and tilt down again, hand to shin to your block on the outside of the left ankle or fingertips to the ground. Your arms, full wingspan is open here from the ground all the way up to the sky. Feel that press to your left foot, hips drawing back. Micro bend your left knee. Feel the spine reaching forward as a crossbar here. And then pressing the base of your skull and your shoulders back into an imaginary wall that's directly right behind you that you can just press back into. Stay with your breathing. Nice. Inhale to come back up into your warrior two, strong in those legs. And then we're going to reverse the warrior on the exhale. So right hand to your hip thigh or behind your waist. Left arm lifts up nice and tall. Feel that big stretch from your left hip crease up to your left side body. And you don't need to lean super far back in space. Your left side body all the way through your left elbow is pretty much reaching straight up in space. And at the very top, your hand can arch back and your head can come back a little bit in space. Press deep into that lunge. Find your breath. One more in-breath here, and on the exhale, cartwheel your hands down to frame your left foot, 
turn onto the ball of the right to a low lunge, we step back to the top of the plank, and then this is another choice of how you want to flow. Maybe you're going directly to down dog. Maybe we're halfway down to Chaturanga Dandasana and you're going low cobra, or again, I'm taking to take upward facing dog. Might be one breath on this part, it might be a couple rounds of breath. Shift it back into down dog. Awesome, friends. Again, find a couple rounds of breath in down dog. Hold on to your position, stay with your alignment. So now we're going to take that sun salutation B flow breath to movement. Where an inhale brings us into one part and an exhale brings us into the next. So we'll start on an inhale, lifting the right leg back and up in space, three-legged down dog, pressing back to your heel. And as you exhale, step up into a low lunge position. Warrior two on the inhale, left arm back, right arm forward. And as you exhale, take your extended side angle pose. On an inhale, open up to your star, facing to the left. And as you exhale, find your wide-legged squat position. On the inhale, come back up into your star, facing to the left. And as you exhale, open warrior two to the front of the mat. With your inhale, lengthen out your right leg. And on the exhale, hinge forward and tilt down into triangle, opening the arms up. Inhale, reverse your warrior, so sweep the sky with that right arm. And on the exhale, cartwheel down to a low lunge. Inhale is plank, you can go directly to down dog or exhale halfway down. Inhale could be that uh, up dog or low cobra. And exhale meets us back in down dog. Awesome. So we'll find this on the other side. So you're ready for it, take an inhale to reach your left leg back up tall, three-legged down dog, press your heel up and back. Exhale, steps this up, low lunge position. Inhale, warrior two, so right arm back, left arm forward. And on the exhale, extended side angle pose. Inhale to your star, now facing over to the right side of your mat. And on your exhale, find your wide-legged squat position. Inhale, open back up into your star. And on your exhale, warrior two to the front of the room. Inhale, straighten out your left leg. And on the exhale, hinge forward, tilt down into trikonasana triangle. Inhale, reverse the warrior, so big movement with that left arm. And on your exhale, cartwheel down to your low lunge position. Inhale is plank, and from there, your choice. Maybe you exhale a down dog or drop it halfway. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Meet in downward facing dog. Awesome, friends. When you're ready from that downward facing dog, bring it into child's pose. It's also a good time if you want to snag a drink of water, grab a quick drink of water. So if you're not familiar with child's pose, take your knees out to the edges of your mat. Tops of the feet are to the ground, your big toes draw together. Sit bones go back to your heels, and then the weight of your forehead comes down to the ground with your arms out in front of you, or maybe tucked at your sides. And just slow down the breathing here. Find those inhales, find those exhales. For the last couple rounds of breath, maybe actively press your hands forward so you're pushing your sit bones closer back towards your heels, lengthening your spine. Excellent, friends. Rise up to a tabletop, drop one of your hips to the ground, bring your legs forward, and then bring the weight onto your back, and we're gonna go into some core muscle work. And the work we're about to do, this, this, these core uh, kind of uh, poses, some are straight from the yoga tradition, 
and then others are more from a fitness, uh, kind of the fitness world, and so we make a little hybrid out of these. Um, with all of it, you get to use your breath. You get to let your breath be your guide, so we bring that mindfulness piece into it. We're gonna take our core moves uh, from four different positions. So the first one is gonna be legs straight up in space, and we're gonna have movement that are toe touches where you're lifting your hands up towards your feet, and then we'll have a hold, and then we'll do more movement. So when you are ready, let's begin the toe touches. So exhales lift you up, inhales can reset. And with this speed, I want you to go as slow or as fast as you like. I want you to keep it mindful, follow your breathing. Awesome, so let's hold, arms straight up, gaze forward. If your neck needs support, just throw one hand back behind the base of the skull. Feel that flexion in your core muscles right here. And then back into your toe touches, a little more movement and we'll take a rest. Nice, so take a rest. Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined bound angle pose is a fantastic one. Bottoms of feet together. Let the knees open wide. Your legs are in a diamond shape. Just relax the weight of your head, relax the weight of your arms. Just that deep breathing. Awesome friends. So the next core pose we're gonna work with is gonna be from a the legs at a leg lift position. So you can start with a reverse tabletop. Hands behind your head, head and shoulders off the ground, knees bent at 90, bottoms of the feet are pointing forward. And then the movement that we'll do is we'll take the inhale with the knees coming in. On your exhale, your legs go up and they lower to that leg lift halfway down, inhale comes back in. So just join me, let's start these up. In, up, and downs. Inhale, exhale, straight up, legs to the diagonal. And then one note, when your legs are held out on that diagonal, you want to feel your low back is rooted into the ground. So we don't want the low back arching away from the ground. Nice. Hold your legs in the diagonal. If you want to take a cue from the Ashtanga tradition, you can press your palms together, reach towards your feet, shoulder blades slightly toned back behind you and then staying with that breathing. Otherwise, hands behind your head. You can also relax your head, press your forearms to the ground, but have that low back pressed into the mat. Nice, let's go back into our in up and downs, throw a few of these in and then we'll find another rest. Nice, find that rest. If you want, we'll plant the feet to the floor with the knees up in space. Walk the feet out wide. Reach your arms out in the T from your chest, palms face down. And then drop your knees over to a side so you're rolling onto the outside edge of one foot, the inside edge of the other foot. Gaze turns opposites. On an inhale, your knees come back up to center. And on your exhale, you switch the sides out and you just, again, roll it onto one inside edge, one outside edge of the feet, and gaze to the side. Take this a couple times.
nice friends. Bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little rock out on your back. And then to come up to a seated position, you can press your way up, or if you want to rock your way up, grab onto your hamstrings. And just rock back and forth the length of your spine, maybe one, two, three times. And then we meet up on the sit bones in, in preparation for Navasana, boat pose. So lengthening your spine up and away, toning those shoulder blades back and in. And then, friends, cross your ankles, and the movement piece in boat is going to be rowing to the left and the right. So you join me when you're ready. And just weave your breath in as it makes the most sense to you here. And then we'll hold the Vasana boat pose. You can pull against your hamstrings, lengthen your spine up. You could keep your hands behind your legs or open your arms up. Keep the knees bent or you could lengthen your legs out as well. Keep lengthening your spine, shoulder blades slightly toning in. Find that breath. And then cross your ankles. We'll do a few more of these row twists. Nice, friends. Come forward into a tabletop position, facing to the front of the room. Find cat and cow. So inhales, dropping through the belly, lifting the chest and the tailbone up. Exhales, rounding the back into cat, letting the weight of the head release as the mid-back pulls up high. Okay, and the last core one that we'll do, this is just going to be uh, just a straight yoga pose. This is going to be our dolphin pose. So we'll take that tabletop position and then bring it down onto the forearms. And we create the specific shape of our forearms, the number 11. And then we'll lift the hips up in space, kind of like we're going into down dog. Elbows will want to flare away from a parallel line and make more of a V. So it's up to you to keep them in. Release the weight of the head to lift back between behind your legs and then lift your sternum back up towards your thighs and so core muscles but a lot of shoulder work as well in dolphin. If you'd like, reach your right leg up, press back through your heel like you're trying to press up into the ceiling, pressing into the wall behind you. Creating that, that length, that space on the underside of your arms, on the, on the, the, the rib cage back there. And then on an exhale, right foot's up, bring it down, switch it up, pull your left leg back and up in space. Press through your heel, create length from your elbows all the way back up through your foot. Stay with your breath. Nice, release the foot down. We'll walk back into a forearm plank position. Press up to the top of a plank, and from your plank, shift your hips back in space, down dog. Inhale, right leg back and up in space, three-legged down dog. And on the exhale, open the hip and bend the knee, make a scorpion tail. Watch that your left heel isn't tilting to the left, it's straight back behind you, and you're not twisting deep into your shoulders. They are nice and steady, nice and solid as they were in a regular down dog. And then that right knee lifts up tall and toes drape down to the side. On an exhale, step the foot up between your hands, find that low lunge position, and then warrior one. So if we did this last week, if you were with me last week, right foot a little bit more to the right, left foot a little to the left, so your hips open up. That, they're, so th that the heels rather open up so the heels are on railroad tracks. Back angle of your left foot might be pointing a little more forward and to the left. And then your arms lift up like you were doing a high lunge. Find that gentle twist in the hips. Don't, no need to overdo it in for your low back. Find the twist that works for you. Right thigh bone plugging back to your body. And all the elements of the lunge, strong through your right leg, through your right glute. Thighs toned in, strong press into the back edge of that left foot. On an exhale, swim your hands behind you, interlace fingers at your knuckles, 
Inhale the knuckles down as your shoulders squeeze, chest draws up, and humble warrior on the exhale. Right shoulder towards the inside of your right thigh. Weight of the head just relaxed here. You could press the heels of your palms together. You could also put like a belt or a strap in between the hands to get them wider to open your shoulders up a little bit more if you're tight. And then elbows are slightly bending forward just a little bit as the hands reach up. Your right shoulder could be above your thigh, uh, resting on top of it or to the inside of it. And again, weight of the head totally released here. Nice, friends. Drop your hands down to the inside of that left foot and open to a wide-legged forward fold facing to the left. So all 10 toes face to the left. Legs are nice and wide. Inhale, come halfway up. You can press to the floor or you can reach your arms out wide like airplane wings. On that exhale, refold. And you can take a rag doll frame, opposite hand outside of opposite elbow or bicep with the weight of the head hanging heavy here. You could also um, pull against the big toes, against the inside edge of your big toes with your peace sign fingers, or against the outside edges of your feet, or against your ankles. Or maybe you've got another variation with your arms you want to work with here. A few more rounds of breath, always reminding the weight of the head to relax in these. Awesome, friends. Walk back up to where you, you came into that, that wide-legged fold from. So you're going to walk back up to frame your right foot and then set your legs up like they were for Warrior One. On an inhale, rise back up into your Warrior One. And as you exhale, cactus your arms open. We're going for eagle arms. So right elbow comes forward, left elbow underneath the right. Look for the palm, wrist, or thumb to hook onto. You can also do opposite hand to opposite shoulder. Inhale to lift your left knee up in space, so you've got eagle arms and a one-legged mountain with your left knee bent at 90. Your gaze is beyond your forearms at the wall in front of you, and your spine is nice and tall. When you're ready for eagle legs, wrap your left thigh around your right thigh, drop the sit bones low, lift the spine tall like you're sliding your back down a wall behind you. Elbows pull up away from your chest so your triceps are parallel to the ground, and then stay with that breathing. And as we take that squat in just the right leg, that's the, the, the leg that's bearing the body weight, find the strength around that leg so we're protecting the knee as we drop into this. And that's all the way up into your glute. Your left foot could flex to the side, or you can press the outside of the foot outside of the calf, that's what I'm doing, or you can do a snake wrap of the top of the foot around the back of your calf. Find your breathing. And on an inhale, bring that left leg back up in space. And on your exhale, we're going to release the arms back and come into airplane. So swimming your left leg back, swimming your arms back. Find some, uh, a little bit of a lift up through your chest, length through the back of your head. And then reaching your the front of your reaching back to your left leg, pointing your the front of your left hip down and backwards. And then on an inhale, just plant this back into a high crescent lunge position. And on your exhale, bring your hands down to frame your right foot. So for half pigeon, walk the foot over to the left side of your mat, drop your right knee over to the right, make a seven shape with your legs. Press to your fingertips, lift up to your chest, take your gaze back over your left shoulder and slide your left leg back a little bit further. As you face back forward, your right knee should be to the outside of your right hand. You can stay on the fingertips or you can bring your hands to your hips if you can take the weight up like this, or to your leg, and that's the leg squeezing down and backwards. If you want to bind, you can do the right hand to the ground and lift that left leg up and back in space and then pull that left leg in towards you with the hand or the crook of your elbow. 
right hand stays rooted, you could also lift your right arm up tall in space. Find your breathing. And you're off of the kneecap on that left leg. You're on the soft tissue at the end of the thigh, right above the kneecap. And then we're ready for our humble pigeon. So just slowly unwind. Bring it down to your forearms. You can also do this on your back in reclined pigeon with the right ankle over your left thigh. Relax the weight of your head down. Just check that you're not dropping the weight of your body into one hip or the other. The hips are up on the same level in space. So the front of your left hip bone, the front of your left thigh are pointing straight down to the ground. And your right heel is closer over to your navel, over to the center of your body, so your right knee is out wide. And with that back left foot, you can always walk it a little bit forward to bring the whole hips and body a little forward, or you can walk it a little bit back to pull back away from your right leg. Find a level of sensation that makes sense for your body and stay with your breathing. Press up to your hands, lift up through your chest, and then tuck through those back left toes and bring your right leg up and back in space to a three-legged down dog. Give a little bit of movement through it, whether you're bending the knee or pumping the leg out, and then find your full downward facing dog, and we're gonna move through that sequence on the left side. On an inhale, amigos, take your left leg back up and tall in space, three-legged down dog, and as you exhale, open the hip and bend the knee. And again, with your hands, your arms, and your back leg, watch that you're not twisting as that top leg and your hips twist. We wanna keep the arms and that back right leg nice and strong, nice and firm, so we can open that left leg up against it, or from it. Nice, on an exhale, Move up to a low lunge, and this is gonna take us into our warrior one. So left foot can go a little bit to the left, knife edge the right foot to the ground a little bit to the right, and then we take that rise up into our warrior one. And the back edge of your right foot, rather than pointing directly to the right, might be coming a little more forward in space. Again, you do not need to over crank the twist here and start to you know, mess up in, inside of your low back or anything. This is a, a comfortable twist that you're coming from. Arms lifting up in space, pressing to that lunge, breathing into it. Swim the hands behind you, interlace at your knuckles, or maybe that strap is in between your hands. Inhale to lift up through your chest, and on your exhale, bow forward, take that humble warrior, left shoulder to the inside of your left thigh, hovering above it or resting on it. Clasp arms out overhead, knuckles reach to the sky, elbows could bend a little bit forward. And keep the, that, that, that strength in your legs that you can bow from. So watch you're not dropping the weight into your legs, you're supporting the, the weight into your legs. And then we unwind into a wide-legged forward fold facing to the right. Excellent, friends. Take your right hand down to the center of your mat. You could use your fist or your palm or your fingers. Inhale your left arm up tall in space so you're facing towards the front of the room. 
Leave your left hand extended or you could tuck the hand back behind you to the outside of your hip or to the top of your right thigh. Another option with your right hand is to grab onto the outside of that left shin and to twist your body towards the front of the room. Left shoulder stacking over that bottom right shoulder. Inhale, left arm up if it's behind you. And on your exhale, bring it down. We're going to switch that out. So left fist, palm or fingers to the ground and center of the ground. Inhale, your right arm lifts up. Leave it extended or tuck the hand behind you uh, to the hip or even grab it out of the top of that left thigh. Again, left hand could grab onto the outside of that right shin and gently pull against it. Stay with your breath. You're doing great. Inhale your right arm up if it's tucked, and on your exhale, come down to your forward fold. And we're going to walk back up into that low lunge that's going to prep us to get back into Warrior One. So set your legs up to come into Warrior One. Inhale, lifts you up, Warrior One. On your exhale, cactus your arms open. This time, bring your left elbow in front, hook your right arm underneath the left, find the palm, wrist, or thumb for eagle arms. Once you got eagle arms, lift that back right knee up tall in space. You can wrap your right thigh around your left thigh if you like, dropping the sit bones low. Lifting up through your spine. Focus the gaze beyond your arms out in front of you on something that's not moving. And your back, it's just like you're sliding, it's sliding down a wall that's right up behind you. So nice and tall through the spine as you get low. Find the strength in that left leg as you lower into the squat. Our unwind is to airplane dakasana. So reaching the arms back, extending your right leg back, lifting up through your chest, finding the length through the back of your neck. Elbows can slightly bend and lift up. Shoulders slightly toned back behind you. Nice, inhale to a high crescent lunge, planting the ball of the right foot back, lifting the arms up. And on the exhale, come down to your low lunge, and then we'll set up that pigeon, so walk the left foot over to the right side of your mat, left knee to the left, push into your fingertips, lift up to your chest, slide your back right leg back a little bit in space, top of the foot's to the ground, and then let the legs pull down and in towards one another, hands to the earth, hips, your leg, if you want to go for that bind, bring the left hand down, bend your right knee, and then take your right hand to the top of the foot and just gently draw in. You could also take that extension of your left arm up in space. And again, you're off of the kneecap. You're on the soft tissue at the end of the thigh. We are ready for our humble pigeon so you can lower the right foot down, bring it down to your forearms. And you can have the top of your left foot or the side of your left foot to the ground, whichever one feels best for you. Again, hips are on the same level with one another in space. So the front of your right hip bone is pointing down to the ground, front of your right thigh points down to the ground. Use that breathing.
And this is going to be our last downward facing dog. We're just reaching the left leg back and up just to open the hip, bend the knee, bring some movement into it, pump through the leg. You can make it a full down dog, get that last stretch out through your legs, last stretch out through your spine, nice deep breath. Awesome, and then bring yourself down to a tabletop and then down to your sit bones. And have your feet stretched out to the top of your mat. Reach your heels all the way forward and then walk your sit bones back in space. Have a little bit of a bend into your knees. Lift your spine up tall. And I want you to feel like you're doing Tadasana Mountain, but you're doing it from the front edge of your sit bones. So we want to watch there's not a slump in the low back. Breathe in and on your exhale, hinge forward. Connect to your shins, the ground, or to your toes. Gaze goes down. And then I'll invite you on an inhale now to lift just your chest and gaze up and reach nice forward, lengthening your low back. And as you exhale, refold, gazes down, crown of the head reaches forward. You can add bend into your knees. If the feet are you know, super close, you can bend the knees a little deeper and grab them. You could also walk your sit bones back away from your feet a little bit, uh, taking that bend out of your knees as you need to, lessening that bend in your knees. Find your breath, friend. Feel how the breath helps your body in these stretches. Inhale, reach the arms up tall in space. And on the exhale, just bring your hands into your chest, down into the floor at your sides. Shift your hips up, slide the weight onto your back, bring the knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your knees, and just give yourself a little rock side to side. For bridge pose, plant the feet down to the ground at hip bone distance. Step the heels in until your heels are underneath your knees. You can check that by reaching your arms down your sides. You should be able to touch the heels with your fingertips. Press into your elbows, your triceps. Lift the hips up and bring your shoulder blades in a little closer towards one another. Weight of the head's totally relaxed. Grip into your feet, lift up through the hips, and find that breathing. And find all corners of the feet in this one. So you're stabilizing your knees in space. Take one more inhale to lift and press. And then when that exhale comes, vertebrae by vertebrae, release down and take happy baby, peace sign fingers to your big toes or hands to the edges of your feet. Knees open up wide. Ankles are stacked above the knees. So the soles of the feet are shining to the sky. Pull down on the frame, bringing low back close to the ground and just take that a slow side to side rock out. Weight of the head, totally relaxed here. And then take your left leg flat out in front of you, reach your right leg straight up in space, slide your hands to your hamstring, and give a roll out through your ankle.
bend your right knee, take your right hand to the outside of the knee, and just let the right knee hinge open to the right for a moment. You could also add extension to your right leg and grab anywhere along the length of it all the way up to the peace sign finger to your big toe. And then a very tr easy transition into a twist, just now bringing your right knee over to the left, rolling onto the outside edge of your left hip, reaching the right arm out to the right and turning your gaze out across your right fingertips, letting the right shoulder gently relax down towards the ground as you work through that ujjayi breathing. Come out of that twist onto your back, bring the knees in, give yourself a little rock. And then extend the right leg flat out in front of you, left leg straight up in space, grab onto the hamstring, give a roll out through your ankle. Nice, and then bend the knee, Left hand to the outside of your left knee, just let the left leg, left knee hinge open, hip hinge open out to the side for a moment. And again, you can extend, you can hook up the piece on finger to the big toe or anywhere along the length of the leg. Transition into your twist, so let the right hand pull the left knee down over to the right, roll onto the outside edge of your right hip, left leg extend, or left arm rather extends out to the left and your gaze goes out over your fingertips. And again, left shoulder relaxing toward the ground, even slightly pulling down towards the ground. So that press on opposite sides in the twist. And just allow your breath uh, to weave its way through the twist. Inhale, works a little bit to get in, and then when the exhale comes, your body releases a little bit deeper into the twist. Nice friend, just bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around them and give yourself a little rock out. And we're ready for our final rest resting pose, our corpse posture, so Shavasana. Making yourself comfortable, letting the legs lengthen out in front of you, the weight of the feet just relax open. Bringing the arms down at your sides, letting the palms turn to the sky, closing through the eyes. And then you can let go of controlling your breath at this point and allow your body just to take back over on the breathing. And as we bring our body into physical stillness, we are inviting our mind and we're inviting our emotions into that similar place of stillness, that deeper place of peace.
nice and slow, just bring some movement into your fingers, into your toes. Stretch and reach your arms all the way back overhead behind you to a full morning stretch, deep in the breath. And then roll the weight of your body onto your side. Take a fetal position. Curl up and relax. Come up to a cross-legged position or whatever pose you'd like to end your session with. If you're on your sit bones, Scoot yourself to the front edge of your sit bones so again you can find the full length of your spine here. And then draw the hands into your heart center, your thumbs can press back towards your sternum. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether it is clear to you or not, no doubt the universe is unfolding exactly as it should. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste.